Lovers squirrel. It's a long sustained quarrel. What's going on, world? Hey, everybody. It's your guy, TJ, Mr. New Cool. And it's your girl, Danny, your happy and healthy honey badger. And welcome <laughs> to another episode. You ever seen that YouTube video? Of course, I've seen that YouTube video. Have you ever seen that YouTube video with the honey badger? I probably didn't. No. So, <laughs> as you can hear, we have a very special guest. This is Tasha Talks a Lot from the Tasha Talks a Lot podcast. Say hello. Hi guys. How <laughs> so, are you doing? Good, good. And we, of course, will um, give a more thorough and proper introduction a little later in the episode, but that way you know the sultry sounds of this voice. <laughs> um, and the honey badger video was. Somebody was like, I don't know who it was, but he was like, did a voiceover of the honey badger, which is this animal that doesn't, it, it's actually like, it sounds like a really sweet, cuddly animal, but it's actually quite like mean and nasty. And he was like, honey badger don't care. Honey badger don't give a shit. And so cause like he was like, literally the honey badger was like fucking up a snake, like in the wild. So it's, if you Google it, it'll definitely pop up on YouTube still. You definitely have to play it for her. Yes. After. Um, but welcome to another episode of Lover's Quarrel. Um, as always, if this is your first time listening, welcome. If this is your second time listening, welcome back. And if this is your third or more time listening in your family at this point. So we know you very well. Or as I like to say, you're a lover. So. Yes, I call you family. <laughs> um, and how are you, my good sir? I'm doing well. How's, how's everything on you? I'm actually pretty damn good. Tasha, how are you? I'm good. I'm tired. Yes. Honestly. <laughs> you know what? I I live in a pretty perpetual state of exhaustion, so I, I understand I'm just that. used to it. Yeah, you just kind of... pilot. Understood. Um, well, let's go ahead. You ready to kind of just like jump into things? We surely can. All right. So, as always, it is time for our elevator talk. Um, uh, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Are you going up or down? I'm going up. All right. And you I didn't ask Tasha if she had one. She said she was going down. She's gonna go down. I was yes. kidding. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I thought you were. Jo- I thought you were serious. I'm sorry. But if you do have to go down, we can. It doesn't matter. And what are you doing though? I'm gonna go up. All right. So you can go ahead and start us off then. So. So when this. Uh, oh wait. I didn't, how are you gonna cut me off? I didn't do my thing. You were at my fault. <clears throat> my best elevator voice, Tasha. Going up. That was actually really good. Thank that you. Was. That was like really good. <laughs> Listen, if this teaching thing don't work out, I'm gonna just like. I mean, your elevator is still trash, but that voice is amazing. You know what? No, you lucky we in front of mixed company, right? <laughs> nah, but go ahead, babe. So I'm gonna go up when this episode drops. It will be dropping on my birthday. So, woo woo! You know, 32 years. And Pice birthday. Thank you. Um, Pisces gang. Yeah, the last day. Emotional ass. First day of spring. First day of spring. So. You are so right about that. Hopefully, it's like sunny and stuff like that. I mean, Rita's gonna be open. You don't like Rita's. I don't really care about Rita's all Rita's that much. Is yeah, I mean, fire. Yeah. But I can appreciate the free ices or ice cream at the or whatever. I guess for me, it's like the closest thing that I would have to like a New York icy. So, and it's still not like that. It's not the same. I need a nice no, little no. like short I mean, Spanish lady scraping my icy out the cart. Amazing. I don't really like Rita's like that. Oh nah. Your readers is okay. Like I, Rita's I don't. My you're joint. never gonna be like, oh, you know what? I could go for some fucking readers. Yeah, no. It's never like that. It's like if somebody stops, I'm like, we yeah, just killed his whole thing. I'm sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> It's still your birthday. Yeah, it is. So. That's that's all I had, you know. Thirty two years. Exactly. Thirty two years young. Look at you. Exactly. What um what's uh athlete has the number thirty two? Shaq had thirty two one time. Oh, okay. But I hate that. I hate when people are like my Shaq here. I see I was saying I'm turning thirty three this year, so I'm saying this is my Jesus year. So I was like That's cool. Mm. So I mean, even though it's one guy, but still, you know. I'm I'm oh excited. My gosh. <laughs> well, I'm gonna continue going up and Actually, in the spirit of all things TJ, right, um, one of, I've been just kind of like an observation I've seen is like one of the, my favorite things is like, I love watching TJ be a girl dad, right? So girl dad is like the new, mm-hmm. not the new thing, but it's obviously in the wake of Kobe Bryant's passing, you know, we've seen and heard these stories of fathers and daughters and um, obviously we talk about Tatum all the time and I... I love watching him just be like a father to our daughter and he's so good at it and he's so dope and like even you know this when at the time that we were recording this we were around at a family function the day before and he's like playing like hand games with her and like even like his little girl cousins they're coming up to him and he's playing like you know patty cake and everything and it just kind of gave me a little bit of the warm fuzzies inside so I you know I appreciate that because that's not something that everybody has so I'm not taking it for granted true so don't get you don't get too gassed. I didn't say anything else. I was true. Don't 
No, that's really cute. Yes. And Tasha, do you have anything on your spirit? That no, one I'm way just to... happy and healthy. Let's just leave it there. Fair enough. <laughs> happy and healthy. I don't have anything else to say. Exactly. You don't have... That's, that's more than enough. Um, well, we're going to hop off this elevator and jump right into our relationship tip of the week. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start things off with the relationship tip of the week. Um, I feel as though, and this, this is one of those ones that's not just about romantic partnerships, because you know sometimes we try to do it for all the ships on this show. And it's the tip of the week for me is to say the things to the people you love. And what I mean by that is, um, which is sometimes advice I need to give, take myself, is to make sure you articulate to someone, like, talk, talk to them and tell them you love them. Tell them when you're upset with them. Tell them when you're frustrated with them. Tell them when you're proud of them, because ultimately, like, you need to communicate to folks when, A, when they're around, because everybody's not always going to be around for, to hear those things, and um, people can't do better or be better or know that they're doing well if you don't articulate you it. Don't tell them, yeah. Yeah, you have to talk about it. So um, just make sure that you know you, you speak on those things. And, and I wanted to make sure it was kind of all-encompassing because it's not just about giving people their roses or their flowers when they're around to smell them, but also it's about giving people the feedback they need in order to do better, okay? Okay, so... Our relationship tip of the week is that. What was yours? Um, my tip is, as my wife would always say, something, you know, simple. Um, and I'm going to say it's relationship, but friendship, ships. Um, try not to take yourself too serious. Um, this is like true. Sometimes we make things bigger or, or worse than it is just because we be in our own feelings. Like, we feel like... It was, it's more serious to us than it is than, than, than it may truly be and sometimes that can like ruin a situation or mess up a vibe or mm-hmm. so I have been guilty of taking myself too seriously at times um, but I am a cancer and I do live me in me too I was just th- about to say I feel dragged thoroughly <laughs> in my feelings when's your birthday? Seven seventeen. I am July 16th there we go look at God <laughs> see I'm always in my feelings yes. <laughs> all the time yes so, so is she yeah, but you know what? Don't drag her. <laughs> but you know what? That makes us like it really good, good people. Like right. because we are often very empathetic. We can tell when other people are in their feelings. We can help them. We can. Re- I'm very good on like reading the room, like emotionally. Me so, too. So, you know, shout out to cancers and being in our feelings because somebody's got to do it. It's dirty work, but here we are. No, it just doesn't make sense to be like tough all the time. Ever. So, like, know your truth. And you're Pisces, so you're also yeah, you're fellow also, wise, yeah, so you're definitely in your feelings. Same. You're just not as like not as much. Exactly. Not as vocal. But the feelings are there. Well I'm actually very vocal. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah, that might be that also might be like biology too, because that's just like a family tradition for him. So they speak on everything. But um yeah, so well that was still a decent tip of the week. That doesn't mean you win. <laughs> Please don't understand that like me acknowledging that does not mean that you've won. I'm changing, so I'm not going to gloat or, you know, I don't got to say things that everyone else knows already, so. Oh, my gosh. You know what? The assholery. <sighs> Anywho. I just want you to be great. Thank you. I want the same for you. Thanks. Moving on. <laughs> um, so, now it is time, of course, for our Black History Month, or not Black History, Black History 365, right? That's what McDonald's did, right? Um, so, for me, do you have yours, sir? I do. Okay. Do you want to do yours first or do you want me to do Because mine is pretty good. You see, are you trying to say that mine wouldn't be good? I'm going to say that, all right, as long as you didn't repeat what I did, because you stole mine the other week. I didn't steal yours, but you sent me what you have already, so I can't steal it. All right, listen, but. I don't know. Niggas be cheating. Um, I'll take the first one. Go ahead. So, March 20th, when this episode drops, March 20th, 1950, Dr. Ralph Bunch receives the Nobel Peace Prize for his work as a mediator in the Palestine crisis, making him the first African American to receive the honor. Ba 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 ba, I'm loving it. Got you. Thank you. <clears throat> so we'll give two. It's my birthday. You got you got you got a lot me. All right, all right. Birthday behavior. Go ahead. Spike Lee was born. Uh huh. This is a lot. That makes that makes a lot of sense now. Wait, what does that mean? Because I can see you and Spike Lee having like similar personalities. I feel like that's an attack. It's not an attack. It's just. I really do. I, I feel, feel like, like he's also an emotional creature. He just puts it into his art. It's not terrible. It's not a terrible. Yeah. 
I don't know if I took it as good, <laughs> but I didn't take it as bad. He's a passionate person. So if it's yeah. not good, it's gonna be. Eh. I can see you wearing like. Like he's continue. Reach outside. No, 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 no. Continue digging. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just gonna drink my wine. Excuse me. So my other fact is on March 20th, 1970, uh, the students at University of Michigan went on strike, which lasted until April 2nd because they wanted to demand an increase of black enrollment. The uh, administration agreed on April 2nd to meet those demands. Well, that's important. Representation. Yeah. Matters, population. I remember, when Towson, I remember when Towson, the black students did like a, a strike, a sit in. Did they? Mm-hmm. Recently, it was like two oh. years ago. Oh, okay. I'm going to say, not when we were there. No, it was like two years ago. Oh. But they did it f- to like fight for African Americans' rights and stuff like that to Good. make changes. So. Good. Well, that was all. I feel like we've covered a lot as far as like supporting, you know. Father's doing good things. TJ celebrating his birthday, giving you know a little bit of advice, and now we've gotten the historical aspect in it. So we've covered a lot in just a short amount of time. So now what we're going to do is go ahead and take a. Oh wait, I'm tripping. You are. I was gonna let you just do what you, you gonna let me. Do. You was gonna let me just continue digging my hole because I, mean, I didn't write it down. But I forgot you today's word of the week. I, yeah, I do know the show because I do not want to lose. I do the I do the format every week. I know the show. <laughs> So when that you know shooters be shooting. Listen, I be I be trigger happy sometimes. Hopefully you don't get the word wrong. It's time for TJ's word of the week, where he tries to stump me because he can't beat me. All right, so I'm gonna let Sarah say the I word. I thought her name was Rebecca. Every week is gonna be a different white woman. <laughs> Every week, the lady who's because he pronunciation is not his strong suit either. It's not, but <laughs> diaphanous. 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 If the dress is so see-through that light shines through it. It's diaphanous. You could also call it sheer or transparent, but diaphanous sounds much fancier. Diaphanous. Diaphanous. You got it, killer. Diaphan. Play, play. Who is it? Is it Sarah? Sarah. This week. No disrespect, that. Diaphanous. Let me do it one more time for you. Diaphanous. Okay. Uh, again, this is the first time I'm hearing One more this time, word. Though. I don't want you to. Don't treat me like I'm slow. I don't. I'm not. Diaphanous. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, D i a p h a n o u s. Fuck out of here. <laughs> That's what the fuck I'm talking about. You see my phone. I did not. First of all, you have a privacy screen, nigga. So I, I do, don't. I it's cracked. Not, so you, you can see. I did not see your phone. That's crazy. Cause listen. Have you I, ever heard that word before? I have not heard that word before. I swear on Tatum. It's I've never heard that word before. Bullshit. I should have put money on it because then <laughs> by this week's episode, TJ has still not paid me my $40 from now, what's that be, three weeks ago when we, we Listen, bet on we're not going to talk about any of that stuff. You Run me my money. Stuff on my birthday. Run me my money. For my birthday gift, can you... Tasha, don't you like when people pay you the money that they owe you? Yeah, they have to. Exactly. Yeah. Three they... weeks, that's too For long. my birthday, can I get $40? No, you cannot get $40. You know what? You can give, I can give you back the $40 you gave me, but you need to put it in my hand. Oh, okay. Or cash at me, which you still... Venmo, Zelle, I take all of those things. Well, on that note, we're going to take a break. <laughs> and get a message from our sponsor so I can try to pay Danny back. One Hurry day. up. Time is money. I don't like you talking to me at all. <laughs> Hey friend, it's time for you to ditch those workout gloves and get the grip and wrist support you deserve. What do you suggest? You need to get the Gaines Load and Lock Grips by Gaines Sports Gear. They are more durable than gloves, have a non-slip grip pad that provides grip support and added wrist support unlike your traditional workout gloves and will protect your hands from calluses. Do they come in different colors? Not only do they come in different colors, but they are available for men and women. Do yourself a favor, go to gainsportsgear.com. And remember, a better grip equals a better lift. Embrace the process. And as always, you know that you can get 10% off your first purchase by going to Gains, that's G A I N Z, sportsgear.com, and entering the code LOVERS10. And now, back to the show. All right, y'all, and we are back. And now, It is time for us to start to peel back the layers that is Tasha of the Tasha Talks A Lot podcast. Again, 
thank you so much for coming on. We are truly (laughs) honored. Um, And what we like to do is, with any of our guests, is we like to kind of start with like a little bit of an icebreaker, a little uh, warm up question, um, and take time if you need to to answer it. But the question that we ask everyone is, what are the wisest and or kindest words someone has ever told you? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Um, I feel like I don't know wise people, so they don't. Oh no! So I'm kidding. Um, I won't say kindest, but um, when people say they see me, I'm gonna just go with that. Okay. Because then that they see me, like see me working. Mm-hmm. Um, they see who I am. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna say that that that's probably the kindest. So like, like that's my greatest compliment. So, like, they see, like, for who you are, like, what you're yeah, doing. Yeah, like they see what, me, not, you know what I'm saying? So. Got it. That's important, though, because ultimately, like, we all want to be, there's a sense of validation that comes in that, and, like, either, like, of your authenticity or the work that you're doing or anything in between. So, I think that that's a dope way to say it. And it, it doesn't have to be a lot of words. It just has to be something yeah, that's means, like that, that that's meaningful. Me uh, so. Well, I'm here for it, so I see you, too. Oh, thank you. Go, boo. <laughs> Thanks. Um... I'm like fake nervous right now. Why? I don't know. I'm always fake why. Nervous. We are nobody. Like you, know, you, you are. You might be somebody. I am not. I I'm am super regular. I am somebody's mother and some and a teacher who does this podcast with her husband. That's it. But that's it. You got yeah. somebody's wife. I, oh, I said husband. Yeah. Nah. Nah. She, no, nah you, you turned this into a business <laughs> transaction. Just shut up. <laughs> See, exactly what you did. Always. And this is. I'm and somebody's this is, mother. I'm a teacher. And I have a show with my husband. <laughs> That's exactly how you That's did it. That's not how I meant it. I also, okay. I'm somebody's wife. No. But we are, please, please. like very you, you, Pisces of you. Right? Very passive aggressive. Uber. I feel so attacked. I, I did come for you for that one. I mean, are you gaslighting me? No, because okay. I'm not questioning your sanity. Okay. I am telling you that. I'm just asking. I told you what I did and I meant what I said. Okay. That's the difference. You got it. Um, Go to the next question, please. <laughs> um. So... You have the podcast Tasha Talks a lot, right? Um, so what prompted you to start the show? Like what do you talk a lot about? What like where like what is the, the brainchild that is Tasha Talks a lot? Um, so I honestly just started it to see if I could. Mm-hmm. Um and to like shut other people up. Okay. Because I'm from Jersey and a lot of people didn't have it, or they still don't really. Mm-hmm. Um so I'm like, fuck it. Let's just Google some shit and mm-hmm. then start talking. Mm-hmm. And then that's how it came about. And the name is to troll my mom. <laughs> because she said I talk a lot. So, yeah, it's no, it's... Danny talks a lot too, so... All the time. Yeah. That's fair. It's nothing wrong with it. No, um, it's definitely not. I, um, but yeah, it's, it's, um, I want to see if I could do it. And now that I'm doing it. I need to probably start back doing it because mm-hmm. it's been a while. But, okay. Um. Yeah. It's. It's yeah. not easy though. It's like yeah, it's. It's way more taxing. Not than I thought. It's just I'm trying to do other things. Mm-hmm. So like the podcast isn't like. The most important. The most important, and I, I hate to say it like that, but that's just what it is. But it's. So I'm gonna get way. back though. I promise. Mm-hmm. I have to. Listen. This is you putting on wax. See if you say it. No, you I have, have to. Period. You have like, to. Yep. I've, I've, tra- I've told myself I'm giving up procrastination for Lent because are you? I, I am. How have you been doing with that? Actually, pretty goddamn well. Thank you very much. How have you? So yes, because I posted homework on Google Classroom for my students okay. already, and I know what I'm teaching tomorrow. So that's already a leg up. Because sometimes I just be figuring that shit out in the shower in the morning when I'm getting ready for oh work. My gosh. But you know, the kids don't know the difference. Um, but I think. Even though this is like, I, I feel as though you, what you touched on just now too was how with like doing this as podcasting, especially like I think if it's not like your primary like source of like, like it's not your job, right? right. Like it's not, it's which it's a passion, it's whatever, that it's really hard to um, sometimes like stay consistent or sometimes life happens. And well, it's, I did it. To like branch into other things, okay. and now that I'm doing the other things, you it's kind of, of yeah. Got so it. it's not like I don't want to, more or less. Mm-hmm. Well, sometimes I don't, mm-hmm. but it's not like I just. It's not like fuck the podcast. It's yes, just, I'm doing the other things that I wanted to do. So it's like, 
where is the time? Mm-hmm. And podcasting is a lot of work. It is. It definitely is. It definitely I don't want to just do, have like a show just to say I have a show. Yeah. And you don't like, want like, to like half ass it. I would like the show. So. Absolutely. With you doing other things, by the time that this episode airs, you would have had your pod link up. I will. In New York City. I will. Um, what was the goal of the event? And what are you hoping to see happen with the pod link up for the future? Um, so that came about because of um, me and T Martell. People on um, Twitter was like, "We need a link up mm-hmm. for podcasters." Mm-hmm. So we just we don't even we just met like recently to mm-hmm. do this. And um, the goal is to just get us all in the same room and like network mm-hmm. to get to know each other. We talk on the timeline all day. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's that. It's I think it's, it's not. Yeah, I just want us to meet each other like it's important all. put like names and faces together and then like people exchange information and they start to like like you said like literally link up and like you know I, oh i'll come on your show you come on my show and like for the most part like that's it like it's not like and we're all doing the same thing in a sense of podcasting so i think it is great to be able to have everyone in the same room to get to meet each other and do things so mm-hmm. um there's um actually uh another link up it was actually a lot of issues going on which is the opposite of what i'm trying to promote um for this podcast link up Mm -hmm. and uh i guess there's another meetup sort of situation and it was like actual beef recently really yeah i'm okay i'm curious you've 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 drawn some you've put some bait i'm taking the bait what's happening um, so mine, me and T's, T is from Love and Relations Podcast. Got it. Um, ours is hashtag podcast link up yes. NYC. Yes. And the other is pod live. NY. Okay. And that's cool. Yeah. But it was, it's beef because. Because it's similar. Like goal or. They say similar names. Oh. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I don't, it's not a similar name. But, period. And then like. We're all the events could be the same, yeah. but we're in New York, so it's going to be the same. But either way... Um, so with that beep, how, how does that, I guess, make you feel? Um, it's annoying as hell because like that wasn't my intention. Mm-hmm. And I just literally want people to come together. So mm-hmm. it's like we can't preach togetherness and black community and all this other shit and then be upset as someone is having a similar event. Mm-hmm. We all are doing podcasts. These are similar things. So mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was frustrating, but whatever. Still, March seventh. Yes, it, it's gonna happen. Um, but yeah, I just I want for everyone to like link up. Got it. <laughs> and it. have a good time. Like, there's gonna be a DJ. There's gonna be drinks. So yeah, listen, that's done and done, right? Like, <laughs> what, what, what more can more people? Good drinks, good good music. Um, so it was actually I think this is actually a good segue to like our, the next question that we have for you too, which is about like the community that is like podcasting right so tj and i have met either reconnected or met people that we otherwise would not have ever come across probably in our daily lives Mm -hmm. because of doing lovers quarrel um and we've had a lot of like great experiences we've had some not so great experiences um with podcasting yeah with just like being a part of this community and with podcasting and, you know the trials and tribulations right so we've as far no as shows we've yeah, had, yeah we've had like people yeah people not sh- say that they'll come they don't come we've had like like purposely well not purposely yeah. but just like I don't know if it was purposely oh, yeah though, like maybe just like maybe we weren't a priority but they had like they had committed and they, you know, confirmed and stuff. So it wasn't just like it was all in our heads or anything like that. Like we've been in communication, but we've also like met people that and and had been given like opportunities to be on platforms that we wouldn't have normally had, and just like make friends. Honestly, like we've definitely made like good friends through this thing. So, um, as far as you though, like what has like your experience been since like entering this community, and what have like your highs and lows been? Um. Honestly, I'm shocked all the time at how, like, people accept me. Mm-hmm. Not that I was, like, I don't know. Again, I'm from Jersey. Like, no one where I am is doing this. So, for me to, like, be in the New York community okay. and everyone loves me, it's 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 weird. But I think they love me because I have a smart-ass mouth. Like, <laughs> honestly, I think that's what it is. And I'm also supportive. Okay. But um, I don't know if I've had bad experiences. Um, but things can get shady. Fair. As hell, um, and I think that that's that's what I don't like. Um, 
Yeah. People are shady. I'm thinking of like the shady moments. Mm -hmm. There's like this person that um, won't be on a show with me. I'm not going to say her name, obviously. Yeah, obviously. But like whenever we're booked together, she won't show up. And I don't wow. even understand. I don't even know this person. Wow. But it's happened like three times. So that's enough time for me to be like, oh, yeah, this might be It's not just a coincidence. This is yeah. not just. So, um, yeah, but other than that, fuck that. I'm, yeah. <laughs> people fuck with me. Um, and I'm meeting so many people. Yeah. A lot of opportunities. Yeah. I'm like doing voiceovers now and stuff. Like, I know. He's lightly. Like, you know, so it's, it's. I'm I'm not paying attention. That's exciting. To like, the I'm, I'm, like that's what is that even like? I mean, I don't I don't know if you can like get into what it is, but like, what is that work like? Because I mean, I literally I, just did the first one today. Like, yeah. yeah. How was it? Was it like cool? It was cool. I need to like obviously practice more so like, yeah. it can be different characters. But I was myself in these. Okay, so it was my voice. Um, but no, I this the podcasting community has helped me. I think it's going to take me where I need to go. Yeah. Maybe not necessarily for podcasting. Yeah. But like a stepping stone. Yeah. And I think that's fair to say because I think a lot of people, you know, there's we 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 see the the big names, we see the people in the podcasting industry and community that have like now like started to branch out, mm -hmm. level up. And of course it's like the high level names. But I think that that's important to see and hear people who are using it um, as a stepping stone as a tool to get to the next get to the level, yeah. get to the next level other opportunities so like podcasting for some could be could be the final destination but for other people it could be right. just Either a one stop. Is wrong. exactly it's a stop on the way to something else um i know for us like we i think we are kind of like riding this wave for as long as we have fun doing it, right. and then if things, more things, or better things come from it, and we're, you know, we're obviously mm -hmm. working towards those things as well, and being quality, consistent content. But it's if ultimately, if TJ and I are just sitting in our dining room for the rest of our days for as long as it's fun to do, and it's like an hour and a half out of the week that we carve out where he and I just sit across from each other yeah, and shoot cute. the shit, then we're still getting what we need something from it from yeah. it you know and if nobody listens then we're still getting something from it because people listen but, yeah, but, you. but you know it's still it's still cool so it's like i think it's like as long as long as it's it's a labor of love that's what i feel like then y'all are cute as shit what, <laughs> what the hell but um, we are nobody <laughs> i um yeah that's i don't i don't think it would be my final because i i just want to talk for a living like for real for real that's so, what i'm saying the What's fact that I'm dream? talking on different platforms and meeting people, um, and people want to hear this voice, yikes! Mm -hmm. um, that means a lot to me. Mm -hmm. I literally have said like most of my teenage and adult, definitely all of my adult years. I'm like, I just want to get paid to talk. I'm like, I'm really good at it. So like, that's why I kind of laugh about like teaching because I'm like, okay, well, I got a captive audience with these middle schoolers. I'm like, I get to run my mouth with these motherfuckers all day, and and, listen to you. and they have to listen to me. Well, most of them do, but you know. <laughs> It's it's kind of like why well, I, I like what I do or I like the being in my education bag because I love to learn I love to talk and kids are don't remember my pains in the ass but they are still like very entertaining. Trust me, I know. Yes. <laughs> How what grade do you teach? Seven and eight. So I have like they're like twelve to fourteen. Oh, personality, personality. Yes, they're sour patch kids always. Like, give me you know they give me their ass to kiss one second but then they come to me crying or they be like. Miss I need a pad. Can I get a pad? And I'm like, oh, no. You told me that you didn't give a shit about whatever I had to say to me. I was like, I should just let you. Oh, okay. But, Yikes. Yeah. I'm glad you gave that example. People get to see how mean you truly are. I mean, I still gave them. Like, I'm not going to leave you my girls. I, 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 well, absolutely. Because that's, that's the reality of the world. Like, you can't give people your ass to kiss and then yeah, turn around and ask them for right. something. That is fair. So that is, that is yeah. take it back. life lessons. Yeah. I'm out here teaching science and realness all day, <laughs> every day. Every day? One pillow. One pillowcase. By myself. <laughs> yes. You got it. I, I, I have nothing for that. Exactly. You don't know my struggles. Get out of here. I do know your struggles. I hear about <laughs> it every day. It's because I like to talk. Anyway. Um, so, we kind of want to actually take a moment now and start to like switch gears. Because we are ultimately a relationship podcast, right? And... We know that, and the one thing that TJ and I always talk about is that we have our experiences and our viewpoint on things, but it's still limited because he and I have only been with each other, and we've been together for a really long time, so dating for us is not like dating for other people. Dating is trash. Uh, well, we're going to talk about that. that. I, I firmly believe that. That has been the consensus of a lot of people that have been on this show. Um, 
So it's, if you if you don't mind us asking, are you currently single, in a relationship, um, dating? I'm in a relationship. Okay, cool. That's fine. <laughs> and um, so the first question is, as far as getting to know Tasha a little bit better is that what are you looking for or have you found that works in a partner for, for Tasha? Oh my gosh, I'm mad nervous now. Why? Don't be nervous. I wish people could see the face. I know. <laughs> Um, yeah, t- cancers were bad at, we have very bad poker faces. They don't even try. Yeah. Um, what was the question? I forgot. The question is, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to make you, put you too much on the spot, but what are you looking for or have you found works for you in a partner, like in a partnership? My heart. Like, it's, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I don't know. Sorry, guys. Nope. It's okay. That's fair. <laughs> no, I do know, but like, all right, so what am I looking? I'm going to just go as if I was single. Okay. That's um, it. Yeah, do that single mindset. Tasha, looking for a relationship, is looking for blank. Um, Someone emotionally available. Okay. Really trying. Um, someone that knows how to communicate or I'm going to say trying after everything because like, I'm not expecting like perfect. Perfection. Yeah. Because um, I too am learning, but... Yeah, communication matters. Um, for me, the emotional part is that's real key. I don't like anyone acting too tough or too cool to like me. Um, I want to say having your shit together financially, mm-hmm. but like I'm still getting my shit together mm-hmm. financially. Um, but there's levels to like. Having well, yeah, obviously. Financially. Yeah, if, if yeah. <laughs> You need to be stable enough for yourself. Mm. Now, I'm not expecting someone to pay my bills. Yeah, like, but you don't want to be rent. carrying them either. Right. Um, mm-hmm. But I do feel like if I am in a relationship and that person needs, and we've, you know what I'm saying, like we're established, then yeah, sure. Because I feel like some people are just mean and won't help the other person. I don't like that. But um, yeah, emotionally available, um, communication. Yo, those two things are like big for me. I mean, they kind of cover. They, they're like, really like umbrella yeah. terms that kind of cover everything. Because TJ and I talk about communication all the time, and we, I mean, again, like you're talking about sixteen, almost sixteen years of being together, and we still have to like sixteen. Oh, yeah, shit. we've been together since high school. So Dang. yeah, it, it's it just happened one day. We just kind of woke up and blinked, and we were in our thirties. Yeah, she locked up. Congratulations, sir. You know what? I... I, I know there's a it's lot of fuckery birthday. out in these streets. It's my birthday. It is your birthday episode, so I'll say sure. That's what I'll say. You don't like the word sure. So I don't, but you do, so I'll use your word. You're gaslighting me. Um, I am. There you go. <laughs> so are you going to apologize for gaslighting me? Sure. Sorry, but anyway, <laughs> wow. um, I think what you're saying though is really important because you have it's it is an umbrella term communication, but communication is something that seems like so obvious and yeah, so people easy. don't do it they don't ever and it's also like you and people sp- and just the way i'm speaking like the the way i'm trying to communicate to you you might be hearing something totally different than what i'm trying to convey so it still doesn't even necessarily yeah, some like people don't even try to use words this is true or like i'm just ready for a relationship like not ready in the sense of, all right, we got to get married tomorrow. Yeah. But, like, the whole consistency. Yes. Like, not, oh, I can talk to you next week type stuff. Like, yeah. I don't want to play any of those games. Yeah. Um, if you like me, show me. Let's see each other. And you got to be fine. Mm-hmm. That's a requirement. Okay. It's considered fine. fine. Like, whatever I'm attracted to. Like, okay. I need to want you all the time. Like, I need to be real lusty over you. Really? And if, yeah. Because uh, what is the point otherwise? So, I think that, like... I hate when people. I'm sorry. No, go I hate ahead. People go say ahead. like looks don't matter. Yes, the fuck they do. You do need to be physically attracted to somebody. Like, I need person. to want you. Yeah. Because if I don't, then what we doing? Do you feel like physical attraction comes bef- like as far as like when you first meet someone, right? Like if you are not in- initially physically attracted to them, will you get to know them? Like the like if they have all like the emotional availability and the communication, but maybe they're not like exactly what you'd be interested in physically, would you even get to the point to know what um, they have going on? I feel on? like there has to be some sort of spark there because I wouldn't know about the emotional or anything. Okay. Yeah, you know, like I won't know if they're emotionally available or if they're what I want. 
unless mm-hmm. something happens. Have you always felt that way, or is that something now, like, as you're older, so you kind of know what you want, so it's like, I'm not even going to play these games, you know? As far as what, what I feel? As far as, like, the way that you feel now about what you want, like... No, I feel like that's after dealing with horrible experiences. Like, I've dealt with the people that talked to me when they felt like talking to me. Mm -hmm. I dealt with the people that I like her, but I'm not going to show her. The games. Like, you Mm -hmm. know, you see it on Twitter. Of course. Um, I've dealt with that a lot. So, it's like, "Eh, that's tiring. Mm -hmm. And I'm a cancer, so I feel like I'm all about love. And Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm not about to just give you all this love to get nothing back. Mm -hmm. Or to only be loved on your terms. Like, no. Mm -hmm. So, but, um... Yeah, um, I I feel like attraction matters. I'm I'm sorry, but I'm not one of those people like no, he can be a, no. Mm-hmm. I gotta look at your ass. Like, yeah, <laughs> I think I think attraction does matter. I think that it, I think you can become more attracted to a person. Yeah, that definitely happens. Yeah. The more you like someone, but mm-hmm. initially, like, there gotta be it has to be there. something there. What are your deal breakers, non negotiables in dating relationships? Um. The playing games thing. Like, if you talk to me, like, when you feel like talking to me, Mm -hmm. no, that's a deal breaker. Um, Things can't just be on your time. If you don't communicate or if you don't even try, I can't deal with that either. Um, I'm not, like, and I have this thing where if I feel some sort of way, I'm going to say it twice. And after that, like, that's Mm -hmm. it. Um, If I have to beg you for stuff, I don't want it. Mm -hmm. So those are. But deal breakers, um, as far as. No ambition, I would say that. Um, okay. That's important, actually. Uh, or knocking what I want to do down. Because I feel like I'm trying to do like a thousand things. Got it. And some people are like, but you work at a pharmacy, so like you have a son. Just mm. go home and do that. And it's like, no. no. And I don't, yeah, I, I can't deal with that. That's another reason I started the podcast, honestly. Because mm-hmm. like I was dealing with people who didn't support that. Yeah. Um, not accepting my child. Oh. Not accepting as your own, but just yeah. not understanding, like, sometimes I won't be able to see you because, of course. like, I have a child. Um, yeah, those things. That's funny. Yeah, like, the first thing you said, I was like, damn, I was like, she really is a cancer because I'm like, the playing games thing. And I, I, no, I, I don't like that. I, I always say that I think that, like, you know what? Maybe God, like, threw me a bone, like, you know, because... I never anticipated, like, finding the person I was going to spend the rest of my life with when I was in high school. Mm-hmm. Like, I just thought that he was my boyfriend. We going together. Ooh, you know, that's cute. Mm-hmm. A little something to do, right? And... But I also know that, like, my patience for, like, being, like, toyed around with or, like, ambivalence or, like, I need reassurance. I need to know. I need to be assured that we're on the same page or whatever. And I think that that's something that is why, like, why he and I work because he was very, like, I mean, sometimes the point was a little jarring, but, like, he was very, like, sure about how he felt about me even when we were, like, kids basically and (laughs) so i just feel like he because he he did feel that way i didn't have to like i just didn't have to worry about the fuckery and that was probably what made it so much easier for me to like be around and stick around and like be like okay with this relationship even though we're so very young because Mm -hmm. it was you felt sure yeah and we had problems and we have problems but it wasn't like the stuff that's gonna like you know rock you to your core i don't think everything has to be like the end yeah every like some things you can work through absolutely um yeah for danny cheating or beating is her non-negotiables it is what it is don't cheat on me don't but don't abuse me Mm -hmm. and pretty much everything else i feel like we can work through and i mean some things we have worked through but i don't even know how to answer that in a relationship i don't know Mm. See, I've been cheated on thing. before and I've seen it was like do I want to do that now I don't know I, and that's fair hmm that's very fair any. I just don't want to get to that point let me not even put that don't put it in the universe no. that's fine that's fine um so and this is actually a question that I I wrote down because like this is like one of those ones where like TJ and I don't know what that's like because we are married we have a child together you are in a relationship, but you have a child from a previous relationship. Mm-hmm. And um, what is that? How is dating in relationships like different when you have a child or children? Like, what's your approach to that as far as like? Well, no one has met my child yet. Okay. I don't do that um, unless I'm like, all right, 
like this is this is the thing. Okay. Um, I think it may happen soon. Okay. But um, it's. I won't say it's hard, but there are people that don't understand, like, you have another responsibility. Mm-hmm. Like, I can't do certain things, or I can't just run... I can't just come Drop to Drop everything the time. off, yeah. yeah. Um, and even if I can, like, sometimes, I just... Want I to. want... Yeah, like, I want to be with my child. Yeah. Um, I'm grateful that I do have, like, my parents to help, mm-hmm. as far as a sitter, but um, it's not... It's mm-hmm. It's not that hard. Mm-hmm. Right okay. now, like I, I haven't had a situation where it was like make or break. But I also haven't been in a situation where a guy has actually cared about my child. Like they didn't okay. ask and things of that sort. Is so that like a? Just like, I never paid attention to it. Okay. Like I never noticed that. Like oh wait, maybe they should be. Like they acknowledged, it, yeah. but never was. Oh, how is he doing? Okay. Mm-hmm. So like now, it's like. Is that a red flag for you now? Because you. Said- I feel like moving forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm receiving that now, so it's kind of like gotcha. Oh, yeah, yeah. So now it's like now that it's like kind of like now you don't, you don't know what you don't know, and now that you do know, I was like, wait, I am grown. <laughs> hmm, maybe that should have been asked. Yeah. So that's important, and because how old is your? your he's seven. Seven. Okay, so that like that's old enough where like he can speak to like opinions and, yeah. and he does and, <laughs> you know what ours is almost three and she has a lot of opinions yeah, too and i'm like yeah. okay so this is just gonna be forever and ever amen yeah for sure okay yeah. especially <laughs> since you guys are like she's gonna mimic you yeah so. definitely well thank you for that heads up for we know what to, like, what's to it's, come it's not gonna shift uh, um, yeah. my son has his comments on my um relationship that, Mom, I know you have a boyfriend. I'm like, no, I don't. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, that's funny because then that leads to our next question. Do you want to take that one? You got it. All right. So me, you said like he's like he says he knows like oh I know you got a man, mommy or something like that. And at first that was even before it was like official, I guess. Yeah. Um, I was like, no, he's like, but I see you talking to this person all the time. <laughs> they peep game. What are you talking about? They kids like, are so observant. Mind your business, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. With that being said, like, has your your child ever let you know in one way or another that like a man that you were dating was like that he was like kind of on board with it or that he was like not you know, for my son it? Wants me to Does he not want you bother to? him. So okay, uh, he's like, do your thing. Oh, so he's all on board. He's yeah. like, yes, mommy, go play. Like, go yeah. play. <laughs> like, don't you have to talk to somebody? <laughs> oh my goodness, what's um. What is, like, kind of, like, stepping out of, like, the romantic relationship kind of angle, but just, like, in being a mom, right, and being a parent, what are, how has been being a parent, like, changed you, right? Because it's it's this life-altering event, right? And so now you've been doing this for seven years. And what has, like, what's your, your feeling towards it, your experience of, like, motherhood and, or parenthood? Um... I don't know how to answer that because I feel like my experience from start was like pretty bad. Okay. Like depression and then postpartum. So it wasn't oh. even like just postpartum. Jeez, so yeah. um, I don't know. Um, at first, honestly, it was just me raising a boy. Like it was survival mood. Okay. Um, and then after therapy and all of that, then we started like the embracing and mm-hmm. the love more or less. So um, my experience with motherhood... It's not like other people's. Like mm-hmm. I'm not a helicopter mom. This is like another little human being. Like yeah. this is my friend. Yeah. That I have to take care of. Mm-hmm. Keep does that alive. Make sense? Yeah. No, it does. Yeah. Like I don't know. Yeah, it's I, not. What do you? Shit think? is tough. It. No. You no, it say that shit again. Like for real, as a single mom. Um, yeah. And a legit single mom. It's not like I have help. Okay. Financially and stuff like that. Um. So, yeah, I'm just figuring the shit out. But I'm trying to make him his own person. Like, mm-hmm. I don't want him to be me. I don't mm-hmm. want... I'm trying to do these things so he can, like, be his own person eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I always say, like... <laughs> yeah, I always say, like, parent parenthood is, like, the most amazing and exhausting thing that you, like, ever do because you're... Like, the kid doesn't ask to be here, obviously. So, right? So, like, they're, they come and you are happy that they're there for the most part but like it's still hard because like you're this still like flawed individual with your own trying issues, to figure out on your own trying to figure it out and you're like and even if you've been an older sibling or you've been a godmother or you've been a, you know an auntie or whatever it's still nothing, nothing compares to when it's like your own kid and you have to like 
in the beginning I'm always you know I used to always say I'm like yo I have to keep her alive like I have to keep her like like feed her clothe her bathe her everything and I'm like this is like I'm doing it but at the same time I'm like this is fucking a lot it's like overwhelming. it's overwhelming at times and you know and this is with like help and a village and all that stuff like that but yeah. and and it, and so that's why like I you know I I tell my you know my mom so obviously I'm not a single mother but like my mother was with my sister up until she was 9 10 when mm-hmm. my dad came around and there were a few moments when Tatum was really little like maybe like she might have been like 6 months old 5 months old um and I had like I caught like some stomach bug or whatever and TJ was maybe at work or out of town or something like that and I remember going to my mom's house with Tatum and I had to like had her in the car seat and like I had just enough energy to like get her in the house put the car seat down and like run to the bathroom and I just remember thinking about like my mom and how like if this was with my sister and her at the same age there would be no like house for her to go mm-hmm. to nobody to like drop her off or whatever she'd have to just kind of like do both yeah, that's what it is. and like laying in my mom's like guest bedroom like feeling like a death i'm just like golly like damn like i really like i was grateful but then i was also like yo this shit is like for real when you don't have anyone like consistently or like equally yoked in like taking care of this child so this shit is rough (laughs) (laughs) like for real for real um it's been plenty of those moments i still have those moments Mm -hmm. where it's like yo i'm exhausted i have no energy i can't i'm sick um, or he, like, when you and your child is like together and it's no help. And I, when I say no help, like my parents, they watch my son, yeah. but they're grandparents. So I'm not yeah. expecting them to do anything else. They're not raising him. Yeah. So, yeah. but like those tired nights and sick nights, it's, it's like, yo, I just, I just want to sleep and yeah. you can't. It's just me so. and you. So yeah, no, I, again, like I commend it and I know that like, it's, it's just it's not easy and it's it's like and that's and that's why I like again I like I said like I'm in in all of Florida of like single parents that because I I know how hard it is even with it's the two mm-hmm. of us like when Tatum is sick or she's just like needs attention or whatever when there's nobody to like tag in to do that like that's a lot you know and you have to be there and like I'm saying that as someone like and I've told people before like I'm her mother so there are moments in time where, like, it doesn't matter who the fuck else is around. And all the people that love her are down and, like... She wants you. She wants mommy. Yeah. And, like, there's nothing... Like, I, I'm mommy, so I gotta be mommy, right? And... But, like, to know that that's, and like... You can't turn it off. Yeah. At all. Ever. And, you know, and, you know... So, even when you want to, you know that you can't. And... But it's to the betterment of the kid, right? You want them to be these, like, well-rounded, realized individuals mm-hmm. and... You don't want them stressing. You don't want them, like... Sometimes you do want to say, yo, go sit down. Yeah. <laughs> and have. I'll be like, I need you to chill. Please. <laughs> so with, with not having that help, does your son, I mean, I, he's at an age where I'm pretty sure he asks a lot of questions. Does he, like, ask why his father is in there? Or That's a long story. Okay. Um, it's, it's a long story. Um, I'm going to say his father's in jail. Okay. okay. So um, he went in there when he was three. And he knows his father. Like, they they knew each other then. He's actually coming home soon. So okay. that's about to be a whole different shift. Mm-hmm. Um, that I don't even know if I'm prepared for. Because it's just been us. Yeah. It's just been us from start. But it's really it's just, just been, been us. Mm-hmm. Um, for the last... Since 2015. Yeah. So it's like... It's adjustment. Yeah. Especially when I'm not... It's not going to be a co-parenting situation. Exactly. So it's like... Yeah. It's, yeah. it's tricky. How does he feel about the impending, like... My son? Yeah, your son. Um, it's tough because he's seven and he knows March. He doesn't know the date. So, mm-hmm. like, today, literally, he was mm-hmm. like... Is he coming home? It's today. Like, he's excited. And then, like, the mom in me is scared because it's like, I don't want him to get his, like, hopes up for... Mm-hmm. Not that he won't see him, but yeah. that it won't be the experience that he's that he thinking wants. it's yeah. going to be. Because like, he might have, like, built something right. up Right. And head. also, he left when he was three, when they just played all day and stuff yeah. like that. So, it's like... So, like, the mama burden me is... It's, it's nervous, honestly, but... Not nervous to see this fool. Yeah. But, um, Yeah. It's, and it's hard because you want to protect them. That's what it is. If like. you want to, you want to protect your children, and then at the th- at the same time, you're like, but it's like I want to. 
And in that situation, it can be so hard, frustrating or difficult to navigate because you're trying to protect them from also the person that's supposed to be like this like constant presence in their life and to be a part of this child rearing moment and like unrelated, but sort of related. So being a teacher, obviously like I teach in Baltimore City, so I have kids who run the gamut as far as like experiences, family dynamics mm-hmm. and things like that. And I had one of my girls in eighth grade come to me and she likes to act like she's very unfazed by everything. She's mm-hmm. really smart. She's kind of emo. Um, and she like asked to speak me, to me after school one day. So I'm like, hey, you know, what's up? Like, you don't really ask to talk to me. Mm-hmm. And she lives with her grandmother. And basically the conversation was surrounding like she wanted to like locate her mom because her she's lives with her paternal grandfather. I mean, her paternal grandmother, but her father passed away mm-hmm. and her mom is addicted to drugs and has and hasn't been. She hasn't been in the house with her mom for the last five years. So she was eight. Now she's like, yeah, she's 14, about to be mm-hmm. 14. And, she, you know, that was one like legitimately one of the hardest conversations I had to navigate with her, but with a student because trying to kind of get her to understand which like in in assuming the best that like her grandmother didn't want her to like help her look for her mom because she's like we don't know what state your mom is in right now and yeah and to protect her and me trying to like to explain as this kind of like third party who is not trying to pry but obviously like his tend to like sometimes like spill their guts Mm -hmm. and um to like try to like frame for her like why her grandmother might be might be making the decisions that she's making for her best interest and it you know and it like it was just it's difficult because i also too i'm like even though i'm not her mother like i've taught her for three years so mm-hmm. i feel very close protect to close to her protective of her and trying to explain to like a 13 year old which is still like sometimes talking to a wall and getting them to understand like you know you gotta understand your mom could be perfectly fine she may not be she could be worse she you know and your grandmother is just trying to do what's best for you that's tricky it is and it's hard it's hard navigating that shit with kids because they like to sometimes sometimes they hear you but sometimes they only pull certain things from what you're saying and they kind of create their own like narrative of like okay well this is what my mother meant this is what my teacher and my grandmother meant that's ex- yeah that's that's where my son is as far as like is that like he has this image mm-hmm. and i'm just like I don't got that image. Yeah. <laughs> that's not, that's not yeah. bad. And you're like, you don't want to like crush the dream. And I'm not, yeah, I don't want to talk bad about his father. Of course. Around him. Yeah. But, uh. You'd be like, this may not be And I won't is. be around. Yeah. I don't want to be around. But I, I won't be around. So it's yeah. like, I don't, I don't know. It's it's, it's tricky for yeah. sure. Is well, it going to be tough like leaving your son? With no, I, I don't. It's not like a. T- like a safety concern. <laughs> yeah, it's not no, safety. No, I'm, I'm just. I'm, I'm saying in the aspect of his father's been gone, but it's like, so it's only been them. So it's now it's like, if he wants to spend a night and it's just like, mm. I'm just thinking like for myself, like if, if somebody, if, if you were gone for whatever and now you come back. And well, now, the house is, it's a lot of people in the house. So okay. I, I it, but ugh, he just says spend the night and my heart drops. Oh, I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I don't care. It's just, uh, yeah, I don't know. I didn't think about those things. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I do need to think about it because it's happening. It's going to happen. It's mm-hmm. just I didn't have to think about it for a long time. Got you. So, so now it's like coming up. So baby steps. Yeah. But um, most importantly, I just want my son to not gas himself up. But he's seven. So like. It's. And yeah. I don't want to crush his dreams either. Because exactly. maybe it'll be great. Yeah. But you got it. Like those are the. Con- those difficult conversations suck. Like you. And like. No, because if it's not. If it doesn't pan out, which, you know, even in even in the best case scenarios, it's still not what you kind of like envisioned in your mind. So then you still have to kind of navigate those like conversations mm-hmm. with that. And like seven, again, like even though I teach middle school, I'm in a building with seven year olds. So I see that all the time of like mm-hmm. they just kind of have it. Like, and yeah, he's in his own little world. Like. Yeah. Um, and so at some point, I think we, TJ showed me, um, you had posted at one point online, like, you know, you wanted. Um, I think you do want more children at some mm-hmm. point, and then you want to be married at some point mm-hmm. one day. Okay, with a house, with a house, right? Um, mm-hmm. Which is oh, all that sweet. I remember. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> um, we try to do our homework on this show a little bit, just a little. Um, so for whoever your the final level, whoever that partner could might be for you, like what do you want your partner to possess that will be like best for your child? 
because like so in your situation like you're it, you know, I asked you like what you look for in a partner for yourself, but then also you have you come as a package, right? You are it's you and your child. Mm -hmm. So, what would your partner need to possess that would be like best also for yourself? But those same things, okay? Because he is like I'm not, I'm emotional, mm -hmm. so I, I'm also te I'm not teaching him to be emotional, mm -hmm. but I am teaching him to feel. So if my partner, I need my partner to exhibit that also, um, strength. Like, mm -hmm. I don't need a mom. I don't, I don't like mama's boys. Okay. Like, no. Not saying that you have to be a mama's boy for strength, but um, I want a strong, I want my son to be strong and I need my guy to be strong. Yeah. Um, so I need my guy to be somehow teaching that. Just lead by example. The ambition, um, just the being present. I think that's important. Mm -hmm. So those things. So you kind of brought up the, with, Actually, this and it wasn't a question written down, but um, you say like you don't want to have like your son be like a mama's boy because TJ yeah. and I like, a couple of weeks ago had a conversation about so like there's a saying that like mothers love their sons and raise their daughters, um, and then like conversely like fathers might like raise their sons and love their daughters, mm -hmm. and why do you feel like um like why do you think like being a mama's boy or that kind of like mentality isn't something that you want for like your because son. They seem enabled and um, entitled as hell. I hate it. Oh my god, dating that made me realize mm -hmm. them. Um, his father is one. Being honest, and mm -hmm. it's like you can do no wrong, even if you know you're wrong. Um, no, I want my son to like know when he's wrong. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, and do better, not just uh, my mama said. Like, no, I I cannot. So I'm a it. mama's boy. Well, that's, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you're, I'm not the, not, you're not the worst case scenario, Mama. I'm not sure. That's what I was going to say. Okay, your mom can this, never tell you if you did wrong? Oh, no. My mother tells me. I'm, I'm, so that's what I'm, I'm saying. I'm, not, I'm saying mama boys in the sense of I'm saying my that son can some do people, no wrong. Some people will say that I'm a mama's boy in the sense that, like, me and my mother are close and stuff like that. But my mother will my mother will tell me that I'm wrong. So, like, no, that's not what I mean. Okay. Yeah. I mean something completely like. You, know? you mean like somebody who's like. They're, they're, they're you. mom, you're like, blatantly wrong, but it's like not my son. I, yeah, I cannot say oh, no. that. And that's that's one thing. That's honestly like a fear of mine. Like if we have another, like well, we do plan on having more children, but like if we have a what's son, what's a fear? Like I don't. I'm kind of on the same wave of her as her. Like I want, I, I want, I love. I want my children to know that they are loved. That I will always ride for them. But uh -huh. I also want them to know that I will not just like blatantly like. Ignore it when they're being yeah, like, a fuck shit. Yeah. But why and, would it be a fair if, if we don't do that now with like Tatum? Because I like, I mean, I don't know at this point because I've just seen so many examples of mothers, like again, like raising their daughters but loving their sons. Like they don't like they don't hold their sons to the same accountability mm -hmm. standards as they do their daughters. And what I've always been kind of told or taught was that that saying or whatever is about because. If you're the the a mother has to show her daughter how to be a woman in the mm -hmm. world, so you have to kind of give them those like tougher life lessons, and a father has to do the same thing with a son, and so therefore with the child of the opposite sex, that's the child where you can kind of just like love on them because the other parent has to hold down the kind of like more of like the rearing, if that makes sense. No, I understand. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, but you could you could still love your child and still hold them accountable. You like, can. Yeah, and that's what I that's feel like maybe thing. that's what we may be doing as yeah. parents. But we, a lot of people, trust me, a lot of people they do not understand. like helicopter parents. I don't yes. know if you guys are like that. Like no, if your no. daughter falls and you like, Oh my gosh, like, oh, no, we'd be like, no. You okay, you okay. Right. Shake it off. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Like, she falls and everybody be like I'll be like, nah, she's good. Yeah. <laughs> so but there's people that's helicopter parents until the child is like 40 and it's like mm -hmm. that's a problem gotcha because yeah. you're not one you're not dating your mom mm -hmm. like exactly. your mom is not and then sometimes the people mind. that you're dating <laughs> you're left like they're left with the responsibility of like finishing raising you mm -hmm. yeah and that's not fair i'm not trying to raise nobody like i'm if only people i'm raising are the people that come out of me and that's like not that's not gonna happen okay. and um I can, teaching certain things is different because he's looking like yeah but teaching no. certain things is different raising that's a whole yeah, different you know, thing no like, i, I I agree. Oh, okay. I agree 100%. I don't think anybody should have to raise people. And I, I, I'm a big proponent of, I, I, be, I believe in the idea of accountability. Mm -hmm. Wrong is wrong. Mm -hmm. No matter who it is, wrong is wrong. That's even like, that can go both ways. Like, mm -hmm. even with, um, like, daughters that oh. feel like they they are entitled to being princesses and yeah. they don't have to do, like, I don't like that either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So... 
I'm I'm big on that too. Like I like as I now I am definitely like a self I was a, a self professed like daddy's girl, but I, I feel like I still might be. But yeah, I know I, like, I still got it. I was definitely a daddy's girl till the day my father died, and probably and still am even in spirit. Like you know, but I I also know that like my dad he might have had a more gentle approach to how he like reprimanded me or helped me hold, held me accountable for things than my mom did, but it was. It was never like I felt like, oh, my father is never going to call me out when I'm wrong or anything like that. He wasn't going to be like, oh, no, she can do whatever mm-hmm. she wants because that wasn't the case. Right. Now, again, like he again, my sensitive ass, he was way more gentle with me. Same so I, I received <laughs> I received what he said a lot better um, from my Libra daddy than my Scorpio mama. And mm. but um, but it still was like an accountability thing. And I think like that thing with like. And I think that's like there are extreme cases, but like you see them a lot with like men who like are just like stunted emotionally or women who are stunted emotionally and they don't have anything to contribute because they were reared in these environments where they were told like their shit don't stink basically. And then like you got to come out to the real world and people are like, actually, I think the fuck not. So, <laughs> I mean, say what you will, but I, again, I, I applaud that like you making sure that like a mama's boy is not. No, your, like he. I hold him accountable. Yeah. And he also holds me accountable, though. Like, yep. he'll be like, Mom, I don't like that. Like, mm-hmm. I, I, you made me feel like... And <laughs> then it's like, I got to suck it up. Mm-hmm. It's like, it, I'm the mother, and I, I, I don't... You know? Yeah. Like, why are you talking to me like this? That's initially what you want to exactly. say. But it's like, we have little conversations. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, he tells me how he feels. I have to apologize to him. Mm-hmm. He apologizes. Like, I'm I just... I do that now. I'm yeah, trying. It's, yeah, you have to, because yeah. like... She's only two. One, like, you don't want them to think that it's okay for them to... I don't want him to feel like... His feelings don't matter. Exactly. Um, now, if he's being dramatic or extra, I will say, hey, Kingsley, like, yeah. that's his name. Yes. Um, this does not make sense, and I'm going to tell you why. But, yeah. Um, yeah, for the most part, we have, like, little conversations. Yeah. I'm not, nah, I'm not think, their mom at all. I think we definitely, like, don't... Oh, wait, before I forget. So, you talked about helicopter parents. There's also the other one, which is, like, sometimes they call... Some, some people call them lawnmower parents, and that's exactly. the ones where... They they knock they like mow over or knock down all obstacles for their kids. Like oh, they don't yeah, no. they don't make they don't let their kids like have they like they're the, the parents that like fight every battle for their kid. Oh, no. They want like teachers to like you That's need to give bad. my child you need to give my child a, a, another chance. You need to like can I bring so like as a teacher right so like I have some parents or guardians who will come up and be like oh. Tasha left her science project at home. I know it's due today. Can I like bring it on Monday or whatever? And I'm like, I live somewhere as an educator in the realm of like, no, because I said Friday. It's due Friday, and today's Friday, and at 2:25, if it's not here, that's that's it. it. Or at the very least, I'm like, okay, you bring it in Monday, but she's he or she is not getting full credit. Like, period. Because I said what the fuck I said. This project was given out a month ago. They had 30 fucking days. Like, let it go. Um, but that's like, but they're, because like you have parents who like, I mean, you hear stories about it sometimes too, where like parents will call jobs or call like college professors. Like I've heard of that where like my child is sick or can they get in? No, you have to learn how to advocate for yourself and know that like shit is not always going to be easy and it's going to like obstacles happen. I deal with college students who parents call in. Oh yeah. To your fraternity. Yeah. To to check on applications or stuff like that. It's just like. Your no. son needs to be calling. Put on your big boy drawers. Put on your big girl pants. I, I feel like I was handling things on my own fairly young, so I, I, I can't even see. Yeah, know. like I, honestly, the last thing I re- like, my parents definitely went to all parent teacher conferences, but that's because they were parent teacher conferences. Right. But upon graduating from high school, like, and then of course, like by the time I was in, like, you know pretty much my sophomore year of high school, it was more like just like a check in. Mm-hmm. It wasn't really anything to talk about, but. It's like, when I got to college, I figured that shit out. Mm-hmm. I did, you know, you might ask for help, but, like, there was no way my parents were going to be calling my professors or, like, talking to the resident director or whatever. Because yeah. it's like, no, like, this is time for you now to, like, navigate the world yourself. I mean, but the whole idea of being a parent is teaching your kids how to be able to navigate survive those things. So, yeah, no. if you're going to be doing it, then they're never going to grow. Like, you have to give them the tools and then put them in situations to see how they work in those situations yeah, and then fly. work on it. But other than that, yeah. Mm-hmm. I couldn't wait to do stuff on my own, so it wasn't even... Um, I wish I would have slowed down. 
Oh, no. I feel like I was quick to be like, no, I got it. And it's like, no, I didn't yeah. have to have it. Yeah. Because then you realize you're like, no, oh, I got it all the time. For the rest no, of your life, right? It. Yeah. I was doing it already. So it was just like, all right, cool. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Nah. Yeah, I don't forgot to come. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, as far as, I guess, personally and professionally, what are your hopes, aspirations, goals for yourself in, let's say, like the next three to five years? Um, I hope in three years I'm really getting paid to talk for a living, Mm -hmm. whether it be these voiceovers or um, I'm trying to get into acting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm a good actress, but I'm going to try. That's all you can do. I even want to do comedy for a little bit. Okay. I feel like my humor is so damn dry. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. Um, Maybe a cancer thing. (sighs) Maybe. You, You laugh, though. At times, I, okay. I have. He just, he's a hater. I just have like high raw sense of humor. I like to think that what my humor goes over his head. No. Same. It definitely, that's definitely not it. I it's, mean, sometimes you, sometimes you'll have a funny joke and then sometimes you'll like take that funny joke and just keep on going Then with run it. with it? Yeah. I, I disagree. <laughs> exactly. But what I like to think is like, so I, I can watch Frasier and laugh. He cannot. I really like I'm Frasier. Pre- I'm pretty sure. I, I'm a Seinfeld kind of girl. Okay. So. I can watch Seinfeld and laugh. Frasier is they have laugh lines for, me. for you. Huh? They have laugh lines for you. Whatever. That's the jokes. And you're more like Martin and Well Martin is a Martin's classic. funny too. Don't get me wrong, but I think it's more Martin, like Martin, fresh physical Prince. comedy. Yes, but it's like punchlines and stuff. Listen. I, listen, go ahead. I can laugh at both. I just think you can't laugh at both. That's I, I definitely can. It's not about us right now. So you anyway. My fault. Tasha, so you said voiceover work, um, you have yeah, dabbling in acting. What are some Oh, I'm things? trying to clean my city. Like, yes. Literally. Um, Tell us more. So, I live in Patterson and um, it's dirty. Not sad. <laughs> so, I'm like working with the mayor and other people to not necessarily me pick up the garbage because no, um, but I'm trying to change like the mind frame because I feel like mm-hmm. people go like so there's patterson then there then there's elmwood park right next door okay people go to elmwood park and think they're like in luxury okay. it's the same shit it was actually called east patterson at one point really so i'm trying to change the mind frame like hey you too can live like this if mm-hmm. you fix it so i've been working with them on that um and i created like a mental health program for schools exciting and i'm trying to like get that implemented also so Yo. when i say i'm not doing podcasting like i'm really Doing other things. Trying but you're trying to, to make the world a better things. place. Yeah. We might well, talk about shit. Like, yes. That's, <laughs> that's yin and yang. Do, would you do politics? Um, I feel like, honestly, if I want to make a difference and do the, a mental health thing, I I'm, I really might have to get into it. But, like, that that's terrifying. Yeah. I've had thoughts about that, too, like, in, at some point in, like, the future about that. Because, like, when I think about how I am always want to be, like, of service to children, right, mm-hmm. one way or the other... And I think about, like, there's so much, like, reform and change. The only way to really, like, make a change is to really be in it. Because a lot of everything that I'm... Even as far as cleaning the city, it's money. The money could be there, but you have to, like, really convince them Mm -hmm. as to why the city needs to be clean or why these kids need mental health-ish, like, programs. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, I've been doing my research, obviously. Mm -hmm. And um, they're starting, like, well, they're recording the suicides at like five years old mm. so like that should be enough to be like hey like, let's get, let's get on board but a lot of the people on these boards are like older so they're like eh, maybe something's going on at home or they don't think that school is the place to teach kids to like how to recognize their feelings it's like we're doing everything else we actually have like a, so- a social emotional curriculum that our kids i saw in maryland that yeah. they are doing that but other, other places are not yeah. and it's, it's crazy um but I'm doing it more so as a preventive measure. Like, you can recognize these feelings, so then you can, like, fix it. As opposed to when we're older and getting depressed and mm-hmm. not knowing what to do. Um, at, like, one point, I was suicidal. So, like, all of this is important to me. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to do that. What else? Um, that's pretty much it. I, I mean, that's it. That's and I want to change the save world. Save the world. That's like, I mean, who? I think talk shit and save the world. Like, that's... <laughs> like, now, is it going to be easy doing both? I don't know because mm-hmm. like people want to put you in a box of course. i show skin on my instagram already people are like up in arm you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. but i'm gonna do it and that's that well i'm here for it I, I commend you I and support, I support it because the the human person mother wife 
educator in me is all on board for that stuff because we like and a lot of those like mindset shifts that you're talking about really do have to start who you actually talked about this earlier um is like has to start kind of with like the youth right Young, because they're yeah. the more impressionable ones they're the ones that can really they're not set in their ways so they're the ones that if you really get this stuff in there early can start to change an entire narrative for the entire world quite honestly people we tend to wait till it's too late Mm -hmm. But I'm glad, like, now our generation is knowing about mental health and just changing your mind mm -hmm. frame and unlearning. Um, but, like, if we can start that young, let's do it. But yeah. it's it's hard. Yeah. And we got to give cr kids credit for, like, they get, they don't, we don't give them enough credit for, like, what they can understand and what they can't. And, like, sometimes they might not be good at articulating it, but, but they, they, they know. They, they know. They, they feel that shit. Yeah. And they can, you know, and it might, like, present in ways that we're not clear on. But if, if you really take the time to step back and look at it, it makes all the sense in the world. So putting that preventative measures into place is important because that gives them an understanding of, like, okay, this is what I'm feeling. But then now I have tools to, like... Mm -hmm address how i'm feeling right. or how to like fix it or how to alert somebody to it yeah. so they can help me well i think that shit is Thank too you. dope I'm, I'm trying look that's all you can do it's hard to tell but i'm trying <laughs> keep trying we in your corner thank you um well that was the last question so. that was the last question god damn all right <laughs> tasha can you let these beautiful people that are listening know where they can find you and all uh -huh. the things that, that you're doing I'm at on Instagram, all social media is Tasha Talks underscore a lot. Mm -hmm. um, follow me there and I'll keep updating you there. Yes, definitely. Because um, I, I don't know anything off top except the podcast linked up. Yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm, I'm always busy. Always. Just stay tuned. If, Literally. So if people wanted to like help with cleaning up New Jersey. Well, I don't. They... It's the my It's. I, it's, I'm not going around with bags yeah. of garbage cans because people think I'm doing that. It's like no, I'm not physically going out. doing the cleanup. You're yeah. campaigning um, to be able to get yeah, um, the city involved and as well as the residents because for some reason the residents think that the city's going to like come to their yard and clean. It's like that doesn't it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. But um, if you want to just just DM me, we can work. I actually met a few people like with mental health. Um, that um, I can work in their schools now. Like mm. to present things, so it's like all right. That's dope. So it's social media be. It's a it's a it's a gift and a curse. A lot of times, it, it has a beautiful uh, component to it when it does. Yeah. Th it uses its powers for good. And we might have to talk offline a little bit more about that because, um, it, you know when when the time comes, if you want to like expand out of the state no, of New Jersey, I do. You know, Everywhere. I'll talk to you about my new job and all these uh, okay. things I might be doing. So. Um, folks, well, Tasha, thank you so much for being Thanks on. For having you. For we coming. loved having you, and this has been insightful, and we've learned, and we've laughed, and we've understood how cancers are amazing people <laughs> who love to communicate and share their feelings. And they're really funny. And they're very they're funny. Extremely funny. Extremely, thank you, extremely funny, because TJ be hating on my. I don't be hating. I'm understanding. Should, you know what? It's your birthday episode. We're going to leave you right alone, baby. Um, <laughs> oh, happy birthday again. <laughs> thank you. And. <laughs> Guys, you know that this has been another episode of Lover's Quarrel. And you know that you can find us on Instagram at Lover's Quarrel Show, on Twitter at Lover's Quarrel 7. And you can email us your questions, concerns, comments, and everything in between at Lover's Quarrel Show at gmail.com. As always, I am your girl, Danny. And I'm your guy, TJ. And you know that we fuss. We fight. But, but we, we love. love. Bye. bye. Get off me. <laughs> Say bye-bye. Bye-bye.